It's Andre here from SWL and I want to show you how I set up my MLA 30 plus loop antenna. This is not really a assembly video. I already assembled the loop but I'm going to talk about the assembly and I will tell you also how I found the most optimal position for the antenna. As you can see it's here in an unobtrusive space in my cactus garden in front of the house. It's next to the garage. That wall that you see there is the garage. There is the antenna. So the assembly was relatively easy. Uh, there's no instructions when you get the loop, but basically when you untie it, it sort of jumps into a circle by itself. And then you just need to fix that. What I did, I will show you there at the top. I made a little slit in this piece of reed because it must be on something that is not metallic because this is a magnetic antenna so of course if you use metal to fix it then that will affect the magnetism of the antenna so once you untie it it sort of jumps into a circle by itself it's not a perfect circle as you can see I think it's very difficult to make a perfect circle it doesn't matter because I've been using this for quite some time and it works perfectly fine as it is so you form this little circle and you tie it onto this little box that you get with it. This is the bias T box and you feed your cable into the room, your radio room where you are listening. There are some links in the video description that you can read with lots of technical information about these loops. but. Magnetic loops, small magnetic loops like this one, actually work best at ground level for various reasons. The magnetism in the loop picks up signals at ground level much better because the magnetism in signals are better at ground level. So mine is at ground level. It's in that pot, as you can see. It is about two widths of the loop high which is from what I can gather an optimal height and again as I say my loop works really well so I think that that works so the way this loop works the the flat side the plain side that basically around the middle nulls out noise like RFI noise and frequencies that you don't want to receive because the loop is directional as well although I never turn the direction on mine it seems to pick up what I want to pick up so if you imagine a sphere inside this loop then that sphere as I will show just now in a, in a little graphic that I found on Wikipedia here along the edges of the sphere on this side and on that side is where it nulls out signals and noise so my house is this way that's where the electrical noise comes from. The loop nulls out that noise. Then the signal string is based along the sides of the loop. As you can see in this graphic here. Let me show you. If you look at this graphic representation of what happens there with the signals. The blue indicates where, the, where it's the null point, And the red in indicates where the signals are the strongest. So in practice, if we look at the loop again. That means the signals will be the strongest here along the edges. And these edges do not face any electrical interference. The other houses are quite far away on the other side, as you can see there. So not much coming from there. And the noise from my own house will also be nulled out because the null point points to the house that side. So that is what I found to be the most optimal position for my loop and I've really picked up amazing signals with this one weak South American stations weak African stations so it definitely works I have found that for me this setup works you of course will need to experiment in your own house in your own area and see where the best reception is I did that when I first planted it here in the spot I turned it so that the uh, outer edges faced more like that way and then there was more noise so I turned it and this eventually was what I found to be the best position so the cable I just fed underneath all these plants 
and then coming to the back there you can see the cable I just fed it up into my listening room there through the window so there it goes into the house I will show you now on the inside how then I connected it to the Kenwood R1000 and also to my portable radios like the XH Data D109 so inside the house the cable comes through the window and then it's fed back here and connected to the little amplifier box that you get with the antenna and this little box of course you need to charge with something like this just any USB battery pack to get power and from there it's connected with this SMA mail to coaxial input on the back of my Kenwood R1000. Now they supply a mail to mail SMA cable with the loop when you buy it which is a bit of a hassle if you have portable radios like this one because there's no way to connect it. So the SMA mail to mail cable looks like this on both sides. What I did is I quite simply cut that cable and exposed the wire on one side like that and this exposed wire I tie around the whip antenna on my portable radios and I plug this into the back of the amplifier box there and then it works. I do get quite good reception on my portable radios as well. There's some cards in this video of reception on the MLA 30 plus that you can look at so you can see. So in very basic terms this is what I did. This is how I set up my loop and yeah I've been having lots and lots of success with it.